Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Playtech TV. My name is Kevin and today we're going to be talking about the Gigabyte bricks and comparing these three I have in front of me from this AMD APU based bricks to the Bricks Pro with an i7 Intel CPU in it to the Bricks Gaming with a GTX 760 in it. Before we get into it, uh, this is something we need to get out of the way first. That is that these are shipped as bare bones units. That means you're going to have to add two things yourself. The first is system memory or RAM. And these guys take DDR3L, the low voltage DDR3, which runs at 1.35 volts. So you're going to need to add that in. And you're also going to need to add storage, which in the case of this guy here is only an mSATA, but in the case of these two, means either a 2.5 inch drive or an mSATA drive. So you're going to add to to need to add those two things plus uh, an operating system in order to get them going. Or I'll show you at the end of the video how you actually do it. It's very easy so you don't have to be intimidated and if you still feel uncomfortable with doing it then some of the guys down here at Playtech will be able to do it for you and get you on your way very easily. So let's start then with the cheapest bricks of the bunch, the BXA85045. Now this features an AMD Richland A85545M APU, which has a 2.7 gigahertz turbo clock, and it's a quad core APU. Now it takes a DDR3L at 1333 megahertz and can take a maximum of 16 gigabytes. Onboard video is the AMD Radeon HD 8510G. It has built-in Wi-Fi just like all the bricks. It has an mSATA slot only due to its smaller size and dimensions wise is coming in at 29.9 millimeters by 114.3 millimeters by 107 millimeters and comes with VESA mounting. Now performance wise, uh, uh, didn't do very good. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. So Unigen Valley on the Extreme HD preset, it only managed 2.4 frames per second average, so not very good. However, in League of Legends, which is a game which doesn't have very high requirements, on medium settings, it was hanging around the 60 frames per second mark, but it was dropping down to 40 frames per second sometimes, so still not that ideal. Heat-wise, though, it did very good. At idle, it was hovering between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius, and on load, it was between 71 degrees and 74 degrees Celsius with absolutely no throttling at all. Noise-wise, it was very quiet at idle, uh, very minor amounts of fan noise coming from it. And on load, it was similar to probably your average um, laptop playing a game, nothing too bad, nothing out of the ordinary. So overall, I wouldn't really recommend this one uh, for gaming. Uh, it would be better for a casual user just wanting to be doing things like browsing or typing up documents, um, not for any heavy productivity use either. Uh, and so it would just be better as kind of like an entry PC, you know, casual user PC, or to be used as a media center, it would do that very well also. Next up we have the Brix Pro, and this one is the BX-i7-4770R. So specs wise it's coming with an Intel Core i7-4770R with a 3.9 gigahertz boost clock, and it's a quad core with hyperthreading, which if you don't know what hyperthreading is, Basically, it delivers two processing threads per physical core. That means that highly threaded applications can get more work done in parallel, completing the task sooner. Now, it can take a DDR3L, just like all the rest of them, at either 1333 MHz or 1600 MHz, with a maximum of 16 gigabytes. Graphics is handled by the Intel Iris Pro Graphics 5200. It'll take an mSATA or a 2.5 inch drive. Dimensions wise, it's coming in at 62mm by 111.4mm by 114.4mm. Now performance, so it scored really well in uh, the CPU department. So in Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, the benchmark within that software, it scored 857 marks, which is really, really good, so very impressive there. Now for <laughs> the more gaming oriented benchmarks, it didn't do as good. So in Unigent Valley on the Extreme HD preset, it scored 5.1 frames per second average, so yeah, not too good there. And in Bioshock Infinite, everything maxed out 1080p, it scored 7.52 frames per second average. 
However, in Bioshock on the medium preset, it was still struggling at times, although at other times it was okay. And on the low preset, it was just fine all the time. On League of Legends, absolutely maxed out. It did 90 frames a second average, really solidly. So for the lower requirement games, it's still gonna do you very well. And Payday 2 on high settings with filters off, it did a decent job. However, as soon as you turn the filters on, even to just times two, it struggled quite a bit. Now heat-wise, it was hovering around 65 degrees Celsius at idle. And in heavy loads, it was going over 90 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 99 degrees Celsius, which was the highest I saw. But I only saw minor amounts of throttling, so not too much there. Noise-wise, it was very quiet at idle. However, it did get quite loud in playing games, notably louder than the previous model we just discussed, and much louder than the average laptop. So overall, what do I recommend for this one? So it does an averagey type of job when it comes to gaming. It'll do you just fine for your lower requirement games, such as League of Legends or Dota 2. Um, it should be very solid for that. But anything <laughs> higher than that, uh, yeah, you might struggle a bit with it. Um, it's probably not going to be that ideal. However, for a productivity type use, for anything that needs a lot of CPU horsepower, it's going to do you very, very well. And that's what I would recommend it for the most, as someone doing productivity things that require CPU power, as that is its strongest point by far. Finally, let's talk about the one that most people are interested in, the Brix Gaming. And this one is the BX-i5G 760. So let's get straight into it then with the specs. And it's featuring an Intel Core i5 4200H with a 3.4 GHz boost clock. It's a dual core with hyperthreading. It's on the HM87 chipset. Now it features a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760, so not a 760M, a proper desktop 760 with 6 GB of video memory. Now RAM wise, it'll take DDR3L, just like all of them, at 1333 MHz or 1600MHz with a maximum of 16GB, so exactly the same as the Brix Pro. It'll take an M SATA or a 2.5 inch drive, just like the Brix Pro. And dimensions wise, it's coming in at 59.6mm by 128mm by 115.4mm, and it also comes with the VESA mounting, just like the other ones. So before we get into performance, there's something we need to get out of the way first, and it's something a lot of reviewers seem to have missed. So when that's booting up and you go into BIOS, you can go into chipset and you can uh, set it to two different modes. One is like an operation mode or operational mode, which is just like its normal mode. And then there's turbo mode. And so, so the differences between them is kind of like with the uh, reference AMD 290X. You know how I had that switch on the side? You had to pick between silent mode or uber mode. And the silent mode would only let the fans go up to about 40%, so you wouldn't get a lot of fan noise, whether the GPU temperature would go through the roof all the way up to its thermal limit. And in Uber mode, the fan would ramp up a lot more and go a lot higher. And it's kind of the same with this. So in normal mode, it will only let the fans go up to a certain point, and then they'll stop to keep the noise level down. However, that means that in internal components get really hot, especially the uh, 760 in it gets really, really hot and will go up to its thermal limit. However, when you put it in turbo mode, it'll let the fans go wild. It makes a heap of noise, but it keeps the components, especially the 760, much, much cooler. So for that, I did two lots of benchmarking, one with it in normal mode and one with it in turbo mode, just to show you guys the difference. So at first was Intel Extreme Tune Utility, the benchmark within that software. So in normal mode, it scored 334 marks at 80 degrees Celsius. And in turbo mode, it scored 346 marks at 80 degrees Celsius. Well, hang on, didn't you just say that the temperatures would be lower? Wait till we get to the 760, the graphics testing. So in Unigen Valley on the Extreme HD preset, in normal mode, it scored 24.2 average frames per second at 93 degrees Celsius. That's its thermal limit. So it was starting the throttle, going all the way down to, you know, like 400 megahertz on the GPU. Then in turbo mode, it scored 26.1 frames per second average at 87 degrees Celsius. So no throttling at all. It did solid the whole time. Now in Bioshock Infinite, so this was everything maxed out 1080p, we saw the biggest difference. So in normal mode, 
it scored 43.5 frames per second average at 93 degrees Celsius. So it was right up at its thermal limit again. Now in turbo mode, it scored 52.5 frames per second average. So almost 10 frames better. And that was at 83 degrees Celsius. So almost 10 degrees less. Now that is just an absolutely astronomical difference. However, with turbo mode, uh, you do get a lot more fan noise, which we'll get to very soon. So in Payday 2 and League of Legends, absolutely maxed out uh, in turbo mode, it did it no worries at all. It should be good for most 1080p games on a high setting with medium or low filters, depending on the game. A older title should be able to be maxed out, no worries at all. Now noise wise, uh, I could try explaining it, but I'd rather just let you guys judge for yourself. So this is what it sounded like in normal mode. And this is what it sounded like in turbo mode. So way more noise in turbo mode. Honestly, it is the loudest PC I have ever, ever heard in its turbo mode. It is just so loud. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be an issue for some people. So over overall, what do I say about it? So it's absolutely amazing performance out of such a compact PC. It's just unbelievable, especially in turbo mode, which is what I would recommend it for if you're gonna be gaming a lot. But you're also going to need, uh, well, require, I'll say, um, some good noise-canceling headphones or a really good sound system. Or mount it in a place uh, where the noise is going to be muffled. Because the fan noise in turbo mode is absolutely crazy. And even then, if there's going to be other people in the room, then they might start complaining because of just how loud it's going to be. Aside from that though, it did really good. So noise, you know, noise aside, it did really solid. For something this small, getting that much performance out of it is really something spectacular. But yeah, the noise kind of makes an issue. Now, let me show you how you install the drives and the RAM so you can see how easy it is if you're considering buying one of these. So here we have our bricks ready to have its components added. But of course, first you have to actually get the components. So first up, that's the M SATA. So if you're gonna go that route, you're gonna be wanting one of those. If you don't wanna go that route, then you can go a two and a half inch drive, such as this uh, 60 gigabyte Intel 330 series SSD, or this 240 gigabyte Kingston SSD now, V300 SSD. Now of course you're gonna need your RAM as well. Right here we just have a single stick DDR3L, 8 gigabyte. Whoops, there you go, you can see. And then you're gonna need an operating system moved over uh, to a thumb drive in order to install it onto the bricks. So let's get these components in. So first thing, flip it over. And we gotta take out these four screws. Once you got all four of the screws out, you just grab this part here and just pull up. And this part will come off. This is where your two and a half inch drive will go. Now let's focus first on uh, getting the RAM in. So this is the inside of the bricks. Move this SATA connect out of the way because we don't need it right now. So install our memory. So here's our memory stick. See the groove? It only goes in one way. Now we just put it in like this. See, up on an angle. Then just push down on both sides until it clips in just like that. Very, very easy. So once you've taken the screw out of this post here, just simply slide the M SATA in like this, push down like that. And this might be a little bit tricky since I'm holding it. 
go. And you just screw it down like that there. There you go. And your M-SATA is installed. That easy. Now, for installing a 2.5-inch drive, you just take out these two right here and here. They're quite short, so be careful you don't lose them. And this just comes apart. Don't need this part for now. Then slide in your drive this way so the connector is out the open end, just like that. Flip it over, you can see these screw holes here. Now find two other ones, just like the ones we just took out, in your uh, little accessory bag, the little screw bag you'll get with uh, uh, the bricks. Put in. Two should be enough. I mean, these aren't going anywhere. These aren't moving drives, um, so it shouldn't be an issue. So that's that drive in. See, it's not moving anywhere. The connector out that end. And then we just attach it. Can be a little bit fiddly to get everything uh, lined up nicely. Just like this. Screw it down just like that. And just like this. See, all you need is a screwdriver about this size. And then it's as simple as connecting up our little SATA connector to the drive. Oops, I went around the wrong way. Around that way, the right way. Connect it in, uh, just like that. And then we can just turn over and reassemble the entire bricks. And that's going to round out this video of the Gigabyte bricks. Now if you're still a bit worried about having to install the uh, system memory and the storage, then don't because you can just get one of the guys down here at Playtech to help you out and we'll be able to sort out for you no worries at all. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to Playtech TV if you haven't already and like the video if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.